Hello viewers, in this video demonstration, we would see the analysis of a thermoelectric generator in ANSYS using ANSYS thermoelectric module. Before proceeding to the tutorial demonstration, let's know a brief about it. In industries, a large proportion of energy is lost in the form of heat. Thermoelectric generators can convert this waste heat into electricity by means of the Seebeck effect. In this demonstration, the TEG hot face is at a temperature of 452 degrees Celsius and the cold face temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. Find out the current generated in this process. Before we start, it's a request please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for instant notification of any new uploads. Open the ANSYS workbench, in the toolbox, select the thermal electric, double click or drag it into the project schematic space. We will first add the materials to the project. Double click on engineering data. Click on engineering data sources. Click on General Materials. Select the copper alloy from the outline. Click on the plus icon to add this material to the model. Close the engineering data sources. The added properties of the material can be modified. Click on Structural Steel, then rename it to P-Type. Then modify the material properties for P-Type Semiconductor. Go to Toolbox, then select the Thermo Power Toolbox, click on Isotropic Seaback Coefficient, drag it and drop on the P-Type box. Now put the Isotropic Seaback Coefficient value. Right-click on P-Type and select Duplicate. Rename this material as N-Type. Now change the isotropic Seebeck coefficient of the N-Type semiconductor, change it to negative value. After completing the material properties insertion, now we will proceed for geometry creation in ANSI's Design Modeler. Right-click on Geometry, then select New Design Modeler Geometry. Change the default units to millimeter. Select the XY plane to draw the sketch for the geometry. Go to Sketching Toolbox and select Rectangle. Draw three rectangles as shown. Make sure that all the rectangles should be connected with each other. Now put the dimensions to the sketch. Put the dimensions values in the details of the sketch.
Click on Generate to complete the sketch. Now, we would extrude this sketch. Select the sketch and click on Extrude. Click on Apply. To switch the extrude direction, you can select the Z-axis, then click on the arrow icon to switch between directions. In the Operation option, select Add Frozen so each rectangle will create a separate part. Click on Generate. Extrude depth is 10 mm, which can be put before Generate. Now, go to menu bar create, then select body transformation, insert the mirror tool. Select all the three bodies. Select the YZ plane as the mirror plane. Then click on generate. Select the two upper bodies, go to the create menu, select boolean. Select the two bodies and select Unite, then click on Generate. Geometry is complete. Provide names to the bodies for easy recognition. Select all the bodies and make it one part. Close the meshing and proceed for solver modeling. Assign the materials to each part. Right-click on Mesh then Insert Sizing. Select all the bodies and put the element size. Click on Generate Mesh. Further, decrease the element size and generate the mesh. Check the mesh statistics, as this is a student version and it has a limit up to 32,000 nodes or elements. Right-click on Steady State Thermal Electric Conduction and insert temperature. Select the top face of the top plate and put the hot temperature. Rename it as hot junction. Similarly select the bottom surface of the P base and N base, and put a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. Rename it as Cold Junction. 
Insert a voltage to create a potential difference between the two semiconductors. Select the side end face of the end leg and put a voltage of 0 volt. Select the side end face of the P-leg and put a voltage of 0.08 volt. Rename it as low potential and high potential respectively. Then insert a convection boundary condition on all other faces. Right click on the solution, then insert a temperature and total current density as the desired output result. Click on insert then select probe, select the current reaction. In the boundary condition select low potential. Insert another probe for heat absorbed at the hot junction. Select hot junction in the boundary condition. Rename it as the heat absorbed at the hot junction. Right-click on Solution and select Solve. Observe the results obtained. Click on the Total Current Density. Go to the Results tab, select the Vector Display, click on Vector. It will display the current as vectors. The current generated is 31.025 ampere, and the heat absorbed at the hot junction is 23.267 watt. With this let's conclude this demonstration. If you like this tutorial then please hit the like button. If you have any query or suggestions then please comment. If you have not subscribed to this channel, then please subscribe. Stay home stay safe. Thank you.